All right, so I'm gonna clean this out as if we had a new installation. So I run this make clean and it literally deletes like everything. Um, like it's a little scary. It even resets you if you had like uh, un uncommitted changes in Git, it will, it will get rid of those too. <laughs> um, so it just like literally resets you right back to uh, your, to Git. It's like a get reset hard plus more. Um, all right, so you like we don't have a certs folder and we don't have a code base folder and we don't have anything going on. This is like a brand new clean install. So I am running on this branch here, which has some code that makes all your life a whole lot easier. There's nothing here. That's not on, you know what I mean? Like if you are on the current development head, you can just do all of this stuff manually. But here's like, I wrapped it up in some make commands so that you don't hate your life, basically. So this will get merged in soon, I hope. Um, and then it will just be available. So kind of poopy, I'm showing you stuff that's like not mainline right now, but it's the way it works. Um, so, the first thing is that there's several files that are very important in ILDC. One of them is your, the .env file, which you will not have one at first, but there is this sample .env file. And anytime you try to do anything, if you don't have a .env, it's gonna copy it over for you and make it. But we're gonna go ahead and copy it over now manually. And then the other thing here is that once this stuff all gets merged. Um, I will, excuse me, I'm in the wrong file. I will update the sample.m to have the newest thing, but for now we have to put that in there until some stuff stuff goes through. So the the main things you want to edit in this .m file are I'll go from I'll go from the top environment, which is like the different like modes you can run in like the demo box or your local box or then custom at the end is how you push your own container up use secrets true or false if you're running this anywhere that's going to be available on the wider internet you you are more or less you know you should use true here um use secrets false is just for development purposes only then the the main other things are your domain which you need to get straight before you start if you don't it's fine but you just got to re-index and even if you just like use Fedora differently, you can skirt that re-indexing. Like if you just stuff your files in Fedora and don't put the metadata in until the end, you can just like index it on prod if you want, right? Like there's ways to dance around it. But for the most part, if, if you change this or you move from like dev to stage to prod and they all have different domains and you're really set on making sure the integrity is there all the way through, you know, when you rename domains, all your triples change and all your triples have their own subject. So it's like, there's not much we can do programmatically about it other than just like give you the tools to re-index. So that's that's what we did. And there's some make commands to do that, but you, you generally wanna get that correct before you start moving. Um, and then these things here, uh, repository, which is really confusing. That's Docker Hub repository, which means like you're pulling from our Docker containers. If SFU had a local one running somewhere, you know, like you would change this to be SFU or something. But, um, and then this, the tag, which is what images do I pull? We're pinned on the alpha three build. I need to make an alpha four build and I haven't made it yet. So we're just gonna manually give it the commit hash. So. Every single time we do anything in Isle Build Kit, it builds all of the images, tags them with the commit hash, and then pushes them up to Docker Hub. So literally every single commit of this is like available to you to use. That's why I push things up onto branches that are on the Island or DevOps repo instead of using my own, because then it makes this available for other people to test. So we're just gonna take, I'm literally, if you go to code, like 
I am on, I just click on the commit hash here and get it and get it. So I'm literally just grabbing the latest commit. Ideally, you would just go from, you know, version to version and they're all tagged and named, but we're in an in-between stage right now. So um, I'm going to put this in. So this is going to tell it to always just basically grab the latest build kit images. Okay. And then if I want to run it, I'm just going to, I'm going to say make demo and it's going to make me the demo box. So that means your Drupal container, which is what you are responsible for when you're running aisle, um, the Drupal container, you have no control over. And it's just like one you slurp down from Docker hub and like, you get what you get, basically. Like we made it, here it is, look at it, kick the tires, you know, and then shut it down. It's not meant for you to develop on. It's not meant for you to do stuff. It's even kind of a bear if you want to like add extra modules and stuff like that, right? Um, and you can do it, it's just all on the container. And then if you bring it down and bring it back up again, like all your changes are gone. So like, it's, 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 it's not for that experience, okay? Um, but, We'll let this do its thing. Well, this is a really good example of, and I was hoping there'd be time to go through it, but but there's not. And maybe that'll be the next open meeting. What this is doing right now when you write and make demo, it's essentially restoring an entire island or a site from a backup. So in ILDC, there's this demo data folder, and that essentially just has a backup of a site. And so what we do is we pull down this container. And then I run this restore process on it. And that's how we get all of the sample content, how you get the cats and dogs, how the cats and dogs get into Fedora as well and, and everything else. So it's doing this process right now. And then we'll take this from, everything's on the container. I'll show you how to get it off of this and then show you the mode where you're working, where everything's on your machine and it's bind mounted in so that you can develop and like point an IDE at it and stuff. And then after that, you can take it and then actually put it back onto a container and make your own custom container and then run off that. So we'll go through all of those steps here. And Matthew Lincoln had an, an extra step, which is, the, the database dump that we use for this process of making the, the default box has some out of date config on it because of just the history of that original box. And so we're just dealing with some legacy cruft there. So like the absolute latest and greatest isn't there. The latest code is there, but the latest config is not there. Um, and so we went through kind of doing that and there are some hiccups there that we managed to, to work out. But so here's our box. Here we should have a site and we should get the cats and dogs here instead of Barton. Okay, so we got cats and dogs. So like here's our demo site to play with. Everything is admin password by default. So you can go play around, but you know, you can see we've got all the sample content, Christian martyrdom, and it should all work. Um, yeah, so we got page content here, stuff like that. So that's nice, but if you want to add a module, it's a total pain in the, in the butt. So, um, you know, you can, you can use Docker and just run composer require and drush on the container, but then you're going to lose that if you, if you reset for like any reason. So, um, what you can do is what's on this branch that's useful. Are, is this function right here, this make local from demo. And also it calls this kind of sub function I've got called extract code base. So um, this will like kind of crack open your container and slope the guts out of it and put it on your machine so that you can play with it. So what we're gonna do here is we just ran make demo. So I'm just gonna manually run these other three steps of it and then you would, that's it. So um, we're going to run extract code base. So like if we look just to confirm, we should have like an empty code base folder. Yeah. So this thing is going to 
export your site's configuration into the config sync folder, dump it all out. Then it's going to use Docker and it's just going to like Docker CP copy over your entire web route. And now it's going to be in your code base folder. So if we go here now, we've got this code base, but it's still running on the one that's in the container. It's not running using this yet. So you have to tell it to use it. So what you do is you go into your .m file and you change this to local. And then when you're in local mode and you tell it to give you a new Docker Compose YAML file, it will give you one that tells it to like bind mount in this code and stuff. So if we just do, you need to have the dash B here. It's very important. That tells it to overwrite the file. So if you just run make Docker Compose .yaml, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> And it's silent about that. I apologize for that. But you want to run the dash make B, and now it's going to actually do something. And so when you look at your Docker Compose file now, um, here, it's already at that line of code. You can see we bind mount in the code. So this code base folder is now getting put onto the Docker container like live as it's running. Okay, except it's not doing it yet because it's the old one that's still running. So we just have to cycle our containers and it will it will work. And in fact, the only container it's going to cycle is the Drupal one. So it will recreate the Drupal container. And so now we should have the exact, exact, exact same site. Hopefully this works still. Yeah. So we have the exact same site. Let me go to a non-cache page actually to just confirm that it works. Okay, so it works. Um, but you can develop on it so you know this is where most people would like point you know visual studio or php storm or whatever at this code base folder and then they have stuff to work with um i still 99 percent just use vim right but let's just prove that it's doing its thing real quick so um i'm just going to go into this file that I know of that runs every time an update hook is called. And so I'm just going to go put a, a logging statement in and then it'll, it'll log. So here. All right. So this was on my local machine. This is my local Vim I'm running here. I'm not on the container. And when I go edit something, uh like the 12th day of christmas but it's a page then when we save now that i did this it's it's gonna yeah see it's it's doing stuff right so now if you want to run composer you run it on that code base folder you can do stuff right um things like that if you are going to compose or something I will just say, just kind of as like a heads up, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that by the way. Um, just as a as a heads up, um, you can have a different version of PHP and a different version of Composer than what is on the containers. So in many ways, if you're gonna Composer require stuff, it is still really a good idea to do it within the Drupal container. And so I use this command, but we like composer require what's a, what's a module? What's a module we need? Ban the ban module, right? Say we've got some trolls. Um, then you, if you run it like this, <laughs> Docker composer, see, if you run it like this, you're guaranteed to be using the exact same PHP and the exact same composer. So that's it, auto ban is what I was looking for. Or advanced ban, I think, sorry. There it goes. So it can, it can do it that way. Um, all right, so this is here and this works. So let's, if we do the, the stuff to make it make your own container, We'll have this advanced band module now because it gets copied over. And then I can show you, I can go edit files on my local and it will no longer reflect those changes on the live running site because it's, it's using the stuff that's baked into the container. 
So um, we'll just do it again here. So, ooh. okay, get in the right folder. So here now we're in custom mode instead of local mode. I don't like that the name is custom, but I don't, I don't know. That's what Nigel named it and we haven't renamed it. And it sort of makes sense. We just need to like document it. Say, um, say, say that again, that custom mode is what, what would you define it as? Custom mode is, is running your own custom Docker container, I think is why it's called custom mode. Um, so what happens here when you're in that mode, um, there's this command to build the container called make build. If you run it, it's going to copy over a sample Docker file, just like we have a sample.m file and it's gonna run it and it's gonna build you the container. Now, hopefully we don't run into what I ran into with Matt earlier. So if this white screens, uh, it's okay. And I just fixed it. So uh, I, I just ran make clean. So I just have to like go fix it again. Um, so it built a custom container for us. And all it does is it takes the exact same container that it was using in make local. And instead of bind mounting in the files, it just copies the files over as part of the build process. So now there's no longer that link between your machine and the Docker host that's running. And, and it's safer and faster that way to do it like that. And the caveat here is like, you gotta make sure you manage your, um, manage as much as you can with Composer and your life's gonna be a whole lot better as you go through this like local to custom process, including like your JavaScript stuff. Um, okay, so then this ran, so then all we have to do is we're still not running that. We have to tell it to run that. And what ILDC really is, is like a Docker compose.yaml generator, you know, plus a billion other things that we added to like, you know, help you manage a site and stuff like that. But like its core function is it does that. So we just need to tell it to do that. So as long as the dot M is set to custom, then when we can just tell it, and again, you got to do dash B here to tell it to overwrite it. Um, now, when we look at the Docker compose file at Drupal, we're no longer bind mounting in the stuff. And you can see here it's saying like actually run from the Docker file that it finds in your folder. So it's gonna tell it to run off of that. And um, that is it. So then you just cycle the containers. And again, it's only gonna cycle your Drupal container. And then that's it. So it should be running off your custom one now. So give it a sec, it's running its startup script. Give it a minute here. So, and let me just double check that we're not blown up on anything. So if you keep getting the bad gateway thing, you just need to check the Drupal logs to make sure everything's okay. It's still running. Oh no, okay, so we're good now. So when you see this like FPM is running ready to handle connections, then it's, it's done bootstrapping. Until this script runs, it's gonna give you a bad gateway error. So then it's run. Okay, and so we've got, we're on this site now. So, and we can also, out of here. Uh, I'm just gonna hop in. And just, yeah, so we have this advanced band thing. So like we know it all made itself over, but then I'm gonna go back to that file. That I, that I edit, cause I know it runs on every update hook. And now it shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't log this because it's not aware of this code anymore. So we'll do that. 
which is really, really excited about this alternative title. Okay, see, and it doesn't do anything now. And so that's that's the basic process. You know, the make demo part, maybe not so useful for folks. The make local from demo, I think gets you a good starting point. It gives you everything that you have on make demo, but it puts it on your local machine. Just, yeah, be aware that you inherit the database dump from before. So like um, Matt was missing some configs and stuff, which, you know, may you may deem crucial for your site. Maybe, maybe not. It depends. Um, and that's about it. Probably the use case most people are going to have, though, is you've already got a site somewhere and you just clone it down into code base and then run make local. That's, you know, but if you don't already have a code base, then we've got the chicken and egg situation. And so we've got these commands to at least get you a starting point. And that's, that's what this is. But that's the long and the short of it until it blows up on you. And then you've got to take a deep dive through all this stuff that you, you know, you may or may not know, right? Like that's the price we pay when we gloss over everything for people is that then when something doesn't go right, it's like, oh, by the way, surprise, you get to learn all of Docker now, you know? Um, but yeah, that's it. Is there anything else you want me to show you? No, Any that's questions? great, Danny. Um, you know, I, I probably will have questions, but I just need to like review this and maybe give it a try. So Danny, quick question. Yeah. I know some sites have config splits configured based on an environment variable. How would I pass an environment variable to the Drupal container? With That's all super easy. So that, I'm glad you gave me a nice softball there, Seth. Um, so the, all right. everything in Isle runs off of environment variables there are many layers where we set all of these environment variables too, right? So that you have defaults and stuff like that. And there is an actual, like we've got a tree somewhere in the documentation that actually says like they get overridden in this fashion and these are the things that take precedence and stuff, right? Um, so practically speaking though, you just go to your, where am I here? You go to your docker compose.yaml file and anything in this environment um, chunk gets made into an environment variable where this is the name of the environment variable and then that's the value. So you pass it in there. So you're in a little bit of a dangerous spot when you do that just because if you overwrite your docker compose.yaml files, you're gonna lose that. So you just need to be mindful, like you're kind of hacking after the fact, which is fine. And I do it a lot when I have to just like figure stuff out, right? But um, if you wanted to, if we wanted to more formally provide support for config split, we would just make it something that you put in the .env and then it would make its way into the Docker compose files, which we do in a lot of spaces. So like, you know, this, this Drupal install profile, we would just make one that would be like Drupal config split environment or something, right? And then what we do is in the Docker compose.yamls, I'm showing you how the sausage is made here. I'm sorry if folks are, their eyes are glazing over, but we like literally like we just template these variables out into the file. So when you run this make docker compose.yaml, it takes all your configuration from your .env and it jams it in everywhere. And so it would it would be that. So short answer is just put it in your docker compose.yaml and long answer is put it in this docker compose file here that just deals with Drupal and have it reference the variable from the .env and then it gets it gets made out. And I know the install profile stuff that I have from all the awesome stuff that we got from Whitman um, uses config splits. And I have absolutely no idea how any of that stuff works. <laughs> so good, good to know that I'll be adding something for it soon. Rosie asked me a question I see. 
and I'm a little bit late. Can the container write to that folder, e.g.? We were create. talking about the code base folder. Sorry. I thought that was yeah, no, it totally will. If you're set up on local mode and you do stuff like that, it will, it'll, it'll do that. Um, the container, the, the Nginx user will have rights to everything and it should be able to write to that. And when it writes stuff out, then it will just like appear in your code base folder. So you should be okay. Should, in air quotes, TM, you know, like I haven't, I haven't done it in the past couple of weeks, but it, it should work. 